A little bit straight into the left. You look to your left, look to your left, look to your left. This is about where they were busting too. This is real life sea world. Oh! Oh! That's so sick. Oh my gosh. That might be a keeper. What is going on guys, Victor here, and today I am joined by my very good friend, Mr. Ryan. Say what's up. What's going on guys? Ryan is down here from where? I'm from down here from the Marine Corps. On leave, I'm on vacation, and I am fishing here for two and a half, three weeks. I'll be fishing with Mr. Victor and Miss Brooke. And then we got Babe right here, beautiful Brookie. Hey guys. And both of these two have a YouTube channel, guys. I just wanted to point that out because these two really have been a huge part of this channel and a lot of positive energy and have helped me get where I am today so if you guys please check them out both of their links will be in the description box below Pretty but sweet. today's mission is to get on dolphin all right we are booking it offshore and i'm very excited so stay tuned so much stuff probably underneath the seaweed that you don't will never see it could be a 30 pound wahoo chilling underneath it right now we don't even know oh there we go look at all the jacks there we go see they're all on the sabiki perfect put it sabiki in the water oh yeah and we're bait there we go and we're gonna fill our live well with these and then hopefully see we're gonna catch some dolphins perfect guys yeah we just rolled up to a nice seaweed patch and like i said you don't need to come out here with bait because there's plenty of bait out here the mahi are looking for bait just like you guys are and i got a bunch of dwarf jacks on right here as well as some um baby almaco jacks i'll show you guys that in a second this is a baby almaco jack these are unregulated and mahi absolutely crushed these right here babe says that oh my gosh look at all of them right there this is going to be a good weed line. There we go. They're on, they're on, they're on. And I like to leave my sabiki in the water because usually when you have one on, you'll get a couple more on at the same time. When one fish sees one on the hook, they almost always, uh, more than one will eat. Oh, I got a bigger bait. I got a bigger almaco. Oh my God. See, even this size bait, guys, a keeper size mahi will 100% need an almaco jack this big. And if a 20 pounder swims by, it's good to have a big bait to pitch at him. Oh, there's a boat rolling up on us. That's the thing, guys. When you're out here, everyone's looking to see what everyone's boat is doing because boats stopped in this deep of water are generally on fish because there's literally nothing out here. It's a do uh, desert, like Ryan was saying. And when you see sargasm weed floating like this, pretty much is just a little orange jungle. A lot of times you guys will roll up to the weed and you never even see the baits because they're way up underneath it or they might be 40, 50 feet down, you know? And all these fish are just, all these little baits are hiding from all the dolphin and everything that are trying to eat them. They seek refuge here. But it's true though, when you leave one in the water and it's hooked, all of them will eat it. Same thing with sardines, pilchards, everything. They see the commotion and they're like, I want some of that action. And then you get a full stringer, like this is gonna be. Bam! And then you get your beautiful girlfriend to unhook them all. Wow. Everyone plays a, a role. Oh, look, a rainbow runner. A baby yeah. rainbow runner. And then another little Almaco Jack. These things look so sick when they're babies. All these stripes on them and stuff. All right, guys, so we got about two dozen baits, a mixture of rainbow runners, little baby goggle eye, Almaco Jacks, and then blue runners. So this kind of patch of weed is dead. We've already had two other boats run up on us. So what we're gonna do is generally the further east you go, most of the time is better. The mahi are bigger. Cause if you think about it, mahi are oh, roaming the open ocean. So if there's weed out there, why do they have any reason to come inshore towards the coast when they're already out there? If you guys kind of catch what I'm saying. All right guys, so we have been looking all over the ocean and we just did not find the mahi yet. So, but we did find a really, really neat school of dolphin. I'm talking a massive Massive school, something you would see out of SeaWorld. Better than SeaWorld. <laughs> Better than SeaWorld. And you don't have to pay $100 to get in. I hope you guys enjoy these next few clips. Let it roll.
All right, guys, we just rolled up. Ryan actually spotted this little bird and a log right there. And we just ran a good five miles at least with absolutely nothing in sight. So there should be stuff out, out here. I mean, there's a bunch of little scattered weeds and... Oh, mahi, 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 right there. Babies, 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 babies. A ton of them. Oh, come on, on. Oh yeah, these guys are micros. Probably not going to this time. Where are the big ones at? Well, nice Palm Beach release. Oh, <laughs> they're still just so much fun to catch and see explode out of the water like that. Don't even need a live bait. Just need a little bucktail. There's a one little one right here, Brooke. There's another one. Four, five, six. They're just real little. All right, yeah, this guy's way too small to keep. There you go, buddy. It's the good thing about the jig, guys. You don't have to uh, reach in the live wolf for a live bait. Oh my gosh, that might be a keeper. It's had one that went down. So they are such cool fish. Yeah, this oh, one this could one be a keeper. I saw a couple that looked a little bit bigger. I don't know, even know if this guy's keeper. He's just a fighter. Oh, he's snagged. That's why he's fighting so hard. They hit these things so damn fast. Watch out, the jig's probably gonna fly out. See, this guy hit it so damn, you guys, look at how pretty these fish are, seriously. Ah, but they are just a pain in the ass to deal with. It's the only bad thing about them. Come on, dude, I just wanna let you go. The colors on these things are just absolutely amazing. Look at that. Green, blue, gold, yellow, everything. But sometimes when you catch a bunch of these small ones, the commotion could lead to a bigger one coming by. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, as always. You know, we did get the target species, and for those of you who clicked on this video thinking we're fishing for dolphin porpoises, we would never do such a thing. But <laughs> if you got clickbaited, don't feel bad. We did catch those mahis. They were very small. We, how far did we go today, Brooke? A round trip of 50 miles, mm -hmm. and we probably went about 20 offshore. That is a lot of water and a, a lot, lot of gas, gas money. So <laughs> thank you guys for watching and supporting that gas bill and, <laughs> but um i wanted to quickly kind of touch up on the tackle since we don't have a lot of fishing action i i feel like there's been a lack of information and like the tackle tuesdays and stuff on this channel and i kind of owe that to you guys i really like to help people and i know you guys really appreciate the feedback so i'm gonna hand the ca camera over to ryan real quick and i want to kind of tell you guys about what we're fishing so if you guys are in south florida and you run offshore you can catch dolphin year round it's not a lie the best months are definitely the summer months the calmer months and the more weed that's out here not necessarily more dolphin but it's just easier to find them because you got to think you know what to look for you know you're not just trolling blindly you can go troll next to weed or you roll up on weed so what we like to do we will troll if we have to but like our crew we really like to run and gun so that means you know we're, we're rolling up on the seaweed logs pallets whatever it is if i could have two things guys two rods rigged at all times when you're dolphin fishing an artificial lure, something like this, a small profile, something you can cast far on a light spinner, 30 pound, 20 pound, 40 pound leader, 
doesn't have to be fluorocarbon, but if you got it, use it. And a Spro jig. So this is just the brands. This is a bucktail jig. I love bucktail jigs. You guys always see me using them in my videos, especially offshore, because it just has the perfect profile to fill it, fit a pilchard, sardine, little ballyhoo, anything. And the beauty about these things is dolphin. Ryan, you've seen it before where they reject live bait, haven't I you? I absolutely have, because a live bait will run up and hide underneath yeah. the boat, or if it'll act dead, and they're looking for something fast moving, so Which you can make Which is this. Yep. You can, you, dolphin and love it when you just crank things up on top of the water as fast as you possibly can. So definitely something like a little X-Wrap, Bucktail, anything you could cast far and kind of twitch. And the good thing about artificials too is we caught all of our fish on artificial today. We don't even need live bait because a lot of times, you know, you'll be getting to those little schoolies. They can't even fit the bait in their mouth and they'll just spit it. And a lure, you just keep recasting. You can catch fish over and over on it. And if you guys don't have the jigs and you're just going with live bait, you guys saw we came out here with no live bait. We jigged our own underneath the seaweed, the things they actually eat. And then I'll show you guys the rods we have rigged. These are my standard, what I love to have offshore, the BG 5000s. Anyone who's been watching this channel for a long time knows I love these things 30 pound braid on the conley live bait route and by the way all this stuff will be linked in the description box below hell yeah yes because <laughs> i know i get a lot of questions and um this is the second rod i always recommend when having when going dolphin fishing a live bait rod any type of pitch rod right you could pitch a chunk yeah. on there as well yeah, if exactly. you don't have live bait they'll eat dead little chunks yep. about you know half an inch long and your hook doesn't matter. You want to use a circle hook, J hook, your hook should always match the size of your bait. So if you're fishing small chunks, small hook. Last time you guys saw we caught that big mahi, I caught that fish on a 1-0 circle hook because we're fishing little baits. Always match your hook to the size of the bait, not the size of the fish. Because at the end of the day, it's the size of the bait that matters. So that's a little overview for you guys. Like I said, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be seeing all you guys, my land sharks, in that next video. Do you feel the That's so sick! This is